Hi everyone, welcome back to the build. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the start of our electrical. We're going to start with the lights first. So these are the lights that we're going for. I believe they're touch, though I honestly can't remember. We've got a switch anyway, just in case. We were going to use one of these circular saw attachments that you just put on a drill, but the closest size to the light actually is a bit too big than what we need. So I thought we would just simply use this, pop a hole in the cladding and then fit the light in. But yeah, it's going to be too loose. So what we're going to do instead is get two bits of cladding and we're going to fit the light in the middle there like that. So we're going to cut half the circle on one bit of cladding and then half of the light on the other. All right, holes cut. And what we don't want to do is fit the lights, secure the cladding together, fix it to the roof and then test the wiring once it's all fit. So that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is have all the wiring connected up to our batteries. And then we need to build some housing or some support for our three 100 amp hour batteries. So before we continue with the lights, we've screwed the wheel arch boxes on. So they're now fixed into place. And we've placed our three 12 volt uh, platinum 100 amp hour deep cycle Leisure batteries. And the reason we've gone for three batteries instead of one big one is because as heavy as these are, they are much lighter than one big from 300 amp hour battery. We don't mind when, you know, after a couple of years, the batteries start to die just replacing them because they aren't that expensive compared with a lithium ion, which, you know, after looking and hearing a few people and reading up on lithium ion, it does sound like it is the better option. Uh, for longevity's sake and for efficiency. Um, but yeah, this is what we're going for and we're gonna wire them up in series so it's gonna act like one battery anyway. So yeah, here's a closer look. Uh, they do come with these little handles so you can just pick them up and move them. And you can see that the batteries are positioned towards the back of the, this garage area underneath the bed here. Um, and the reason we've done that is so we can have more access to open space at the back of the van than if we were to inside, just so we can, you know, have more stuff in the garage area, so to speak. Now I just need to look into how we're gonna house these batteries, because obviously when we're driving around, we're not gonna want them moving. So we need to build a structure around them and strap them into place so they're fixed and they're not gonna be moving at all. So we've put a bit of structure around the batteries. Uh, that'll just keep it in place for now. Um, we've yet to strap it all down, so we still need to do that. But what I'm going to do now is put a male and female connector on each of these cables. So I've already unplugged the solar panels at the top there. So what I do have are these. So this tool is basically a wire stripper, like an automatic wire stripper. You put the wire on, it goes in, cuts it, and then pulls it away. So it's very easy. It strips it like that. So I'm going to try that. I'm not sure if this wire is too thick. If it is, I've also got some of these basically uh, and I'll just cut and twist it until it comes off and hopefully you know not break as many of the copper wiring inside the wire itself so cool so there's one I've damaged two which I believe does affect the efficiency you know because if there's not as many of these strands for the current to go through the output isn't going to be what it, what the wire is rated for. So as I said, yeah, they are disconnected uh, from the actual panels itself and I'm wearing gloves, so just being cautious here. Because I've never done this before. <laughs> so I'm a bit like, but you know, let's see how it goes. So yeah, I'm not an electrician. I've only learned uh, from watching YouTube videos. Uh, I feel this should be okay. So before I cut the ends off, what I wanted to first do was to get rid of as much wire as possible. So there's a, a path of like least resistance, so to speak. So I'm gonna cut a hole in the side of this top cupboard here, and then we're gonna run the wires down, and they're gonna be run down on the outside here. And then obviously they'll go into what they need to go to. But we only need about maybe like three, three and a half feet. So yeah, I'm gonna drill the hole, pull the wires through and then cut off what we don't need. So this is a DC load breaker or, or an isolator. That's good for up to a thousand volts. And this just basically means if we want to work on the electrics, our electrical system in the future, uh, we can just break the solar panels off here and we don't have to go up and disconnect everything. 
Um, so yeah, and as this is the first time, we are working on a 12 volt system. Uh, we're probably, you know, there's a good chance we might need it. So yeah, that's what that is. So we've got the leads coming out of the cupboard. And then, as I said, we've got more than enough cable, so that needs to be chopped up. And then, yeah, we need to put a male and female ends, all that will feed into the isolator. And then on the bottom, we need to do that again. And then here, or maybe up there, I don't know yet, we'll put the, uh, the MPPT charge controller. So this is the crimp, and now with the crimping tool, I'm just gonna close the prongs. So that's now on there nice and securely. Now what I'm gonna do, is put that part on. Oh, put the rubber grommet back in. And there. Cool. On connector, happy days. Now same again with the negative. Just twisting the ends to make it easier to fit the crimp on. And again, squeezing the end. All right, cool, so that's two connections. Uh, I did notice that some of the bits of wire were a little bit crumpled, but I don't think that'd be too much of an issue. But if you do think that is an issue, I have left enough room to, you know, do the connections again. So let us know down in the comments if you feel this is rubbish, basically. <laughs> All right, and here's our MPP charge, charge controller. It's a 30 amp one that we got from Renergy. And this basically limits the rate at which the electricity is added to or drawn from the battery. And it prevents uh, overcharging. So that basically helps with the life of the batteries. But so the wire that feeds from the solar panels down into the isolator is four mil. And again, we're gonna be using four mil that runs from the isolator to the charge controller. So what I'm gonna do now is cut the insulation off these wires, and then I'm just gonna leave it as is because then that exposed wire feeds directly into the charge controller. And I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so there's a the charge controller and I'm just loosening the bit in the middle for the wire to go in. As you can see, that's the positive. And then I just feed the wire through and then tighten that back up. All right, it's nice and tight. And then again, same thing with the negative wire. So just loosen that up. Feed the negative wire. I thought I'd quickly point out as well that this wheel arch box, this ply is 12 mil. This one over here is only nine mil. And we've gone with the 12 mil because obviously we actually wanted to mount a lot of the electrical stuff to it. I'll do the negative first. About that much. I'll cut it about here. All right, so that's the charge controller mounted. And you can see that's the four mil cable that goes to the isolator to the charge controller. And now what this will do for it to then next go into the battery is once the uh, electricity is generated from the solar, the charge controller will up the ampage. So what we need to do now is use a thicker cable. So we've got a 16 mil cable. So we've gone from a four to a 16. And this is from the charge controller positive to the battery positive. So we're gonna do that, but what we need to do in between is to add a trip. So this is a 50 amp trip, which also acts as an isolator. So we're gonna put that in between the battery and the charge controller, just in case. Okay, so I can't use these, which we've been using so far to strip the insulation off the wire. So I'm just gonna have to use this and be as careful as I can. All right, there's the insulation. I managed to not, maybe one or two. <laughs> I took one or two wires off, but that's fine again. 
And now, yeah, I need to put this into the charge controller. We probably shouldn't have mounted the charge controller straight away because I couldn't see the bottom, but we just put the phone in there and I can see that that is already open. So I'm just gonna put the wiring in and then tighten it straight away. And I've just made the end a bit more tight by twisting it and then hopefully that should go in a bit easier. Cool, so that's the positive wire in. And now with the breaker, I think we'll just put it in the middle to have like an even distribution of wire either side. So yeah, this positive connects to this end of the breaker and then it will come out here and it will attach onto this positive end of this battery. So all the positive stuff will go on this side and all the negative stuff will come off this side. And then that will mean the battery acts as one battery instead of three individual batteries. So this screw comes out of an Allen key. And you can see it's got this little bit of metal pipe, <laughs> tube. And then yeah, so the wire will fit in there and then it screws down inside. And I just wanna see how much I need to put in. I'm just gonna do a bit at a time, I think. So again, I need to take the insulation off. Again, it's just being extra careful with the insulation because I don't have actual wire cutters for this 16 mil cable. I don't wanna cut, accidentally cut for any of these because they are quite brittle. This is probably really painful to watch for someone who actually like does this regularly. Yeah. All right, so now the insulation's off. I'm just gonna twist it again. And then I need to feed this end. Oh. Feed that in there. All right, that was actually a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, we got a lot of our information from Greg Virgo's electrical layout video. So as I said before, we're not experts. We've got a lot of our information online, but primarily it was that video. So I'm gonna link it down in the description. Cause yeah, that video is very useful and it helped me put a lot of the pieces of the puzzle together for how to put a 12 volt electrical system. So yeah, I'll put it in the description. I recommend if you are looking into building a, like a DIY 12 volt system for your own van or whatever it is, yeah, 100% look at that video, it's great. So yeah, thanks for watching part one of our electrical build. Obviously we've got a long way to go yet. I uh, hope you liked it. Subscribe if you wanna see future videos and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.